Water at just the right time is the key ingredient for any gardener that wants to keep their garden productive, green and beautiful. And the project that I've been working on for the last six months is designed to help exactly with that. It's called the Easy Reticulation Controller version 2. It's designed to be easy to use and low cost so that anyone can afford it. And it's also designed specifically at the moment to work with Home Assistant. And in the very near future, it's also going to be work, it will also work standalone. Let's jump in and check it out and see how it works. Okay, so this is the Easy Reticulation Controller version 2. This is the actual board and it's super small. It's way smaller than the, sec the first version, almost half the size and it's got extra features. So it's got five solenoid outputs instead of four and it's also got some digital input outputs on the side there. So we can connect them to buttons or indication lights like I have on this test unit just here. Now, because of its extra compact size, one of, the, one of its great features is you can put it inside an existing controller. So I've seen quite a few old ones on job sites and I've got one just here I'll show you on, that I found at a job and it fits inside it perfectly. There's heaps of room and you, I've popped it inside just here and you can connect it to the existing transformer and you can either swap the um, solenoids to this board or you could run it in parallel. Uh, if you run it in parallel, you could use the existing controls to turn it on if you're outside. Uh, and you can use this little board to give it a five minute upgrade to Wi-Fi and connect your existing old system to Home Assistant with no problems at all. So that's um, a super simple way of um, using this little board. Um, very, very useful. Now, if you don't have an old system and you want a new one, like me, I've just got this test unit in a, in a nice case and I've designed it to fit with the mounting holes will fit inside this particular brand of case. And it's quite flat, nice and flat and square. And it's not too big and it gives us plenty of room to put things inside it. So as you can see here, I've got my board just there. I've also got an add-on that I've added onto it. It's a, uh, a real-time clock. I'll talk about that a bit, a bit more later and I've got room to bring the cables up if you've got a cavity wall that it's coming up through. Um, I'll just show you how it works now because obviously um, if you're outside and you want to turn the sprinklers on because you've been doing some gardening, you don't want to have to mess with your phone. So all you have to do is um, hit this button on the side. So it's off at the moment, so I'll just hit it. And we've got station one going now and it gives us an indication that one is, is running with the single flash. And if we look at um, station one over there, that is indeed running and the sprinklers are on. Now we can either leave that and it will run for the full duration which is about 15 minutes and which I've set up in Home Assistant or we can actually move on to the next station. So if you want to do two we just hit the button again and it will go on to station two which in my case is my driveway. Um, now um, if we want to turn it off we keep cycling through all the stations and then it will turn off. So a super simple way of using this um, controller makes it a bit easier than version two, version one. Let's go inside now and we'll have a look and see what this looks like in the Home Assistant dashboard. See what features it's got there. Okay, so on the dashboard now we've got our controls for our easy reticulation controller version two. Now, to start off with, I'd like to say that I've tried to keep this nice and simple and very easy to use that will suit um, most people. Of course, this is fully customizable. There's so many things you can change. And if you would like to see something different or it's something done a different way, um, let me know in the comments and um, perhaps we can make that option available if you wanted to have your controller do something um, other than what you see here. Um, but we're going to start off by looking at this one here and we can see here that it's in standby mode and that's telling us the status of the device. Uh, so that as we run through the stations, you'll see that change from um, automatic to, um, to manual mode and it will tell you what station is actually running. Um, the second thing you'll see here is the dur durations. So that's all brought in automatically when you install the device into Home Assistant and it's super simple to install. We'll look at that later. And so if we want to change it, if you want to change the driveway, we just up it to 20, 20 minutes instead. And that's going to run for 20 minutes when a program runs. Okay, so we've got here the start program and stop program. And there's services that are once again brought in when you install the device. So if you want to start a program, you hit start. Here the sprinklers come on outside. We see that front garden is on and the program one is running and station one is on. Now, when station one starts, it turns on the master valve or the pump. So
So that's the first um, solenoid. And also station one, which is the front garden. And it will run through each of these stations in order, one at a time until the program is finished. So that's pretty straightforward. That's a, like a, a typical controller that would do that. Of course, if we want to stop it early, we can hit stop, like so. Um, second, we've got down below the start and stop, we've got the automatic run, the manual run stations. So if you just want to run one station, the, we have these template switches, which have got a little bit of smarts built into them. So if we hit driveway, um, it'll start the ma master valve or the pump and also turn on the solenoid for the driveway and it will run it for the duration of 20 minutes and then it'll stop and it won't run any others. So it's just the one station that will run. And you can either hit this switch on the dashboard or you can control that switch with an automation. And um, it also won't let you turn on any others at the same time. You can only have one on, on at a time. So that's the manual run. And the last thing we see here is the start time. So the start time is currently set to 7 a.m. And that's actually a home assistant date time picker or helper. So I've just tied that to an automation. So if we, whatever time we put in here, uh, if we want it to start at eight o'clock, um, at eight o'clock in the morning, I've got that set up in a home assistant automation that it's gonna start my program, run through it all, and then of course it'll stop automatically. Um, that is, uh, I've also got it set up so that I've got a condition that it only runs on Tuesdays and Fridays because that's my watering days. And uh, that's all done through Home Assistant, through the um, Home Assistant automations because that's the simplest way to go about it. Um, of course, the Home Assistant only needs to start the system and the system will run and stop itself automatically. Well, that's the dashboard of the Easy Reticulation Controller version two. If you'd like to get one to try it out at your place, perhaps to swap out an old um, controller with a new Wi-Fi one, then the the link is down in the description down below to get it fully assembled, ready to go. Of course, if you'd like to make one, they're fully open source. So the, down in the description down below, um, you'll find the design files for the board and also the YAML files for ESP Home. And in the future, you'll also find the additional firmware for the device so that it can operate standalone as well. Well, let's go have a, um, a close up look at the board itself and see what some of its features are now. Okay, so you see here, uh, we've got the new board which is just here, the Easy Reticulation Controller version two. And we see next to the old one, it's like way smaller. So it's, it's about half the size. And uh, first of all, we'll see that we've got a nice terminal block here to connect our solenoids to. And we see here also that we've got five triacs. Now these triacs are smaller than the relays. So because, um, so they take up less space, so we could fit more on. And they also use less power than relays, which means our power supply is smaller as well because it doesn't need to supply as much current to the relays. We also have a more compact removable or replaceable fuse, I should say, uh, just here. And we have our digital inputs and outputs down the side here. Um, so we've got three inputs or outputs and we've got a ground next to each one so we can um, connect a, res a push button or an LED indication light. Now it's got a resistor that goes in line with the GPIO, which means we don't have to add a resistor if we're adding an LED, the resistor is there already, a 1K resistor. And that's somewhat, and that also sort of protects the input if we've got a button connected. Um, so the first one is actually GPIO zero, which means we can just bridge that too if we want to flash it. Um, before we start it up, if we want to change the firmware on here, I'm using an FTDI adapter. So that sort of makes it convenient as well. Um, we've also got this little port here. Now this port is a JST SH type, one millimeter pitch, and it's got four pins, which include three volts, ground, and the I squared, C, I squared C bus, so we can add on extra devices like this real-time clock. Um, I'm gonna do a separate video about this clock here. But just briefly, it is a MAX31328, and it is the same library as um, the DS3231. Now I used to, this one here, the old one, had the clock built into it, and it had a DS3231 built into it. Um, but because my, for most people, you don't really need a clock if it's connected to Home Assistant, I took it off. Um, but if we, you do want one, or if you wanna put it standalone, um, then this one here is available. And it's also got a, a different battery, so it's more available too, this size battery than that one. Uh, but uh, 
more about the, this clock later. Um, we could also add uh, additional inputs and outputs using this port or temperature sensors. There's lots of things you could use this port for. Um, okay, now we've also got a header here and this can be used to connect a programmer to it. So I use this programmer here, which is, makes it super simple. You just plug it in, uh, it powers it and you don't have to hold down GPO zero, it just automatically will flash it when you want to flash it. Of course, you can just use an ordinary FTDI adapter too using this header um, um, here as well. So that makes it very easy to um, update the firmware to your firmware that you might have made for it. So that's all the features of the SIDL board and, and of course it's got the mounting holes too that suit the Allbro enclosure that I showed you at the start and um, which is a nice little um, low cost enclosure to put it in. And once more, because of its low, small size, remember it can go straight into an existing, um, into an older, larger existing enclosure. There are of course some ones that won't fit in, but it does fit in quite a, a few different brands and types. And last of all, um, you'll see here, this is the module that um, I'm currently shipping them out with, is the ESP8285 uh, 82, module. And that's like a proven one that works fine. That's um, very good. Uh, it doesn't have quite as much processing power as the ESP32, um, which is this one here. Now this is the same pinout, they're pin compatible. And so it is available too with the ESP32C3. Uh, which has Bluetooth built into it and some more memory, so a little bit more capable, but at the moment this one here is a bit experimental. Um, but it does work with, with that one as well. Um, so if you do order one, you can choose which you want or you could get both if you want to do some soldering and swap it over. Um, so that's the board, that's its features, that's um, what we're up to at the moment. And now we're just going to do a quick run through to see how you'd go about installing it. So you've just got one and you want to see like what's involved and I can tell you now that it's very easy. It takes zero time at all. Sorry, not zero. It takes one or two, a few minutes. So I'm going to turn this one on and we'll show, I'll show you what, what we're going to do. So we've turned this on. We've got our 24 volts connected, 24 volts AC. And of course you add your solenoids here. So we've got the common and the master or the contactor for a bore and then the four stations that you could have all hooked up and ready to go. And we've got the power light to show us that we've got power there. And we've also got a status light. And when it's flashing, it means it's not connected to Home Assistant. So once it's connected, that status light will stop flashing. So it will create an access point. So if we jump into our computer here and we'll join that access point. Easy reticulation. When we select it, we can do it on a computer or on a phone. A dialog box will pop up and it will let us insert our Wi-Fi details. And then it will connect to our Wi-Fi network. If you make a mistake, an error, it will recreate the access point and you can try again. Like so. So now that would have connected to our network. Now in almost all cases, if you've got MDNS running on your network, you, the Home Assistant will discover it. So if we go to settings, configuration, and devices and services, and we see here that it's discovered it right there. Now if it doesn't discover it straight away, you can do add integration and add it manually by going to ESP home and we can select it and we can go into add another instance. And if you can look up the IP address of this in your router, you can type the IP address into here and then that, you can set it up that way as well if it doesn't pick it, discover it automatically. But it's discovered ours and hopefully you will find yours straight away. And we can hit configure and submit and we'll put it outside in that area outside. And that's it, it's connected, it's done. We see a light has stopped flashing because it's connected to Home Assistant. And we can see in our little ESP Home section down here. And you don't have to have ESP Home actually installed in Home Assistant for it to work. Um, but if you want to adopt this, um, because it will have the dashboard adopt feature, if you want to adopt it and then add your, change the YAML to suit your own setup, um, then you will need to have ESP Home installed. And I'll make a separate video on how to adopt uh, devices that other people have made. Um, but you can adopt this if you want to include it, then you will need to have ESP Home installed in that case. Um, but we can look here, and this is what you'll see if you install it in your system. Uh, you've got 14 entities. So we've got the status entity, 
and we've got the four number entities, which are the duration times. And we've got the four switches, the template switches to turn on the four stations. And they're the ones with smarts that automatically will turn on the main valve as well. And then we have lastly disabled by default is these five switches here. And that's direct access to the switches or the valves, um, the main valve and then the four stations, uh, which you can use if you want to, but you don't, shouldn't really need to access those, which is why they're disabled. Um, so that's it. The device is installed, it's as, it's as simple as that. Well, that's it for the Easy Reticulation Controller version two. What other plans do I have for it other than a beautiful lush green garden? Well, I've got heaps of plans. Some of those include getting the real-time clock up and running and working with this device properly. And also, closely tying into that is allowing it to work as a standalone device on its own. So you can set up the time on the device and it doesn't need Home Assistant. It will, of course, continue to work along perfectly with Home Assistant if you want it to. And of course, um, that will require some sort of an interface. So a web interface or perhaps an app that will operate on Bluetooth. Um, but most importantly, I want to make sure that there's no accounts or subscriptions that you have to um, log in and set up. And we want to keep it nice and simple as possible. And crucially, we want to make it easy to use. I'd like to thank you all for watching. And of course, subscribe if you want to see, follow the project and see how it goes. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.